Hello and welcome back to Lone Wolf. Alright, let's investigate the Shanti Cube. So I'm assuming this is going to be another weird mini game. And a similar ilk to the lockpicking one. You can move the Shanti Cube in two different ways by dragging one finger. Okay. Or by clicking and dragging with both mouse buttons to rotate the cube. Okay. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> ah, so I can use the Sixth Sense Discipline to help me uh, figure it out. Okay, so... Looking at that, it needs to <laughs> didn't actually intend to do that, but okay. Oh, is that all? Okay, I'll just reset the cube. How do I rotate it into the right position? Ah! Oh, okay. That's, that's kind of what I needed. Um, ah. Yeah, I'm really not sure how to rotate this thing very well. God. <laughs> Ah. This is about to explode and kill me, isn't it? Ow. Uh, let's try that again. Because, yeah, I think I know what to do. I just need to figure out how to get it into the right spot, rotationally speaking. I only seem to be able to rotate it round in weird ways. Okay, let's put that back for a second so that it's... Okay, arrow keys are doing nothing. Okay. Ah, right. So I can, okay. There we go. I just needed to hold the left mouse button to turn it and I rotate it with both mouse buttons. Okay. Once I figured that out, I was fine. After manipulating the facets of the cube for several minutes, you are finally able to match the pattern with the shanty lock. The cube tingles with energy, sending an invisible stream of power towards the door. Instinctively, you release your grip, and the cube floats in mid-air, defying gravity. With perfect precision, it moves towards the door and glides into the lock. 
you hear the rumble of revolving cogs and the tortured screeching of ancient change of the strain. Slowly, the panel rises and you breathe a deep sigh of relief. The cube emerges from the lock and moves through the air towards you. You snatch the device and put it back into the Coralinian bag before stowing it securely in the pack. The panel is rising, but very slowly. At the moment there is a gap big enough, you crawl through it and emerge into the doomed chamber beyond. Doomed, domed chamber beyond. Quickly, you retrace your steps all the way back to the entrance to the abandoned mine. As you leave, you are met by a refreshingly cold blast of wind that coats you with a fine layer of powdery snow. You wipe the icy crystals from your eyes and raise the hood of your kai cloak. Your fears have now been transformed into feelings of lightheadedness and elation. You have found and retrieved a shanty power cube, and you must decide by which route you will attempt to cross the chasm. Will you try to cross by the western route that is occupied by the Drakarim? Will you attempt to reach the ancient bridge on the eastern side of the sunken forest, where Leander said she will be waiting for you? I think we've got to go east. Which is going to be harder to reach, but I suspect it'll be worth it in the end. So let's go. Okay. Good. Dang it. I figured I'd have to fight at least one or two battles en route. At least, at least you're not particularly dangerous. <laughs> and yes, I am deliberately using this sword a lot because I want to uh, master its use. For obvious reasons. So I'm assuming that'll give... Probably not a damage buff. It'll probably be... Um, you know, reduced energy cost or whatever, but either one. Don't oh, he's almost dead. Alright, let's just hit him with a quick attack. And he is dead. Good. Now for his mate. Dead and stab. That animation manages to be quite satisfying, no matter how many times I see it, I've got to say. It's just got a bit of punch to it. Okay, it's less bit of punch, more bit of stab, but you get what I'm coming from. You get where I'm coming from. Ah, any good loot? Yeah, potions, some leather, and some bread. Not bad, could be worse. Okay, I might... Yes, I'm going to stop at the Baronium Mine and rest. Yes, I'll talk to the merchant. Can't remember if I've got anything worth selling. No, no, no. Sell that silver necklace. Everything else is crafting materials which I might need, so I'm not going to do anything with that. Do you have any good potions? Do with one or two of those. So let's buy two of those and then rest. I'm gonna say the fact that they're char you know, charging you money for uh, that for stuff. I understand, but uh, I think charging you money, you know, to uh, keep an eye on you while you have a kip is a bit much. Bit of a dickish thing to do. And you can just go to the inventory and put that potion. Good. Alright, let's head on to the gate. Probably have to solve another cube puzzle, but now that I've figured out how to actually do them... Determinately, you make your way towards the bridge through the dense trees and snowy foliage. As you draw closer, you feel the bridge before you see it. 
There is a slight vibration rippling the snow ahead, and it resonates with something deep within you and makes your skin tingle. The ancient bridge is a wonder to behold, a perfect arc of shimmering stone that radiates a faint turquoise light. Every surface is embellished with a myriad of ancient glyphs and symbols. The approach to the bridge is blocked by a tall, arched stone gate, and from out of the shadows of the gate arch steps Leandra. She's grown impatient and is anxious to press on. Give me the cube, she demands, and points to an ancient shanty lock located to the side of the gate. My father wanted to destroy this cube, but it has many useful properties he's unaware of. It can be used as a key to unlock the gate. You tell her about your escape from the old hot spring mine. Leandra seems almost disappointed that you made such a discovery so quickly, but she seems happy that you have decided to cross the chasm here. No time to waste, we must open the gate. And cross the bridge now, it's time for you to get this gate open. My prototype is somewhere on the other side of the chasm. Okay, so we've got another cube puzzle. Okay. So... simple. <laughs> Typical. No, that wasn't it. Ah. And it's blown up in my face again. <laughs> Even when I get told the solution, I can't manage to uh, do it. Let's try it again. Let's just watch the bloody solution. Okay. Is that cheating? Possibly. Is it just having a good character build? I'm glad I picked up Sixth Sense. I've got to say I'd be scuppered in some of these if I hadn't. You have aligned the facets of the cube correctly, and it begins to glow and once again enters the recess. Now the engravings match precisely and the ancient locking me mechanism disengages. Look there! Cast Leandra, pointed to the arched stone gate. It's opening! The great stone portal creaks open, revealing the glimmering surface of the bridge beyond. Together, you run towards the open portal. Briefly, you stop to snatch up the cube before you hurry across the ancient bridge. The relic is stable and you stow it away. As you close your pack, you take the opportunity to ask Leandra a question that has been playing on your mind. 
Leandra, there's something I need to know. Why, despite your father's strict orders, did you defy him and study the Shanti power cubes in secret? She's shocked by your unexpected question. You have unlocked a dark secret that has haunted Leandra for some time. A flood tide of emotion wells up inside her, and she is suddenly powerless to hold it back. With a subdued voice, she tells you her sad story. Two years ago, the miners of the old hot spring mine accidentally discovered the Shanti chamber you visited. They called for my father, and he explored the halls. I was with him when he found the cubes, when he realized their explosive potential. He firmly demanded that the mine should be sealed, for fear that the relics would endanger us all. My opinion was completely the reverse of this. I knew I could not persuade him to change his mind, so I retrieved one of the cubes and took it back to Rockstar. I studied it in secret and began to understand its properties. It harnesses a powerful energy, but it can become unstable. I discovered that by rearranging the facets of the cube, it can be made safe to carry. Leandra pauses to wipe away a tear from an eye before she continues. One dreadful morning, our neighbor's young son sneaked into our house when I was gathering some books in my attic room. Oh, young Lenar was always so curious about my inventions. He thought the cube was a harmless toy. He took it, and he ran out the back door. He was only a few steps away from the house when the cube exploded. Lenar was killed instantly, and I... I was so sorry because I knew it was my fault. There was nothing I could do that would bring him back to life. I retrieved the cube and hid it in my room. The villagers knew Lenar as a reckless boy. They didn't ask themselves too many questions. It was assumed he'd stolen some explosives, like the ones they used to sweep the tunnel of the mine. They said it was an unfortunate case of death by misadventure. I didn't know what to do. I told my father what had really happened and he was so furious. He said it was my fault because the cube should not have been there in the first place. I tried to explain what I was working on, but he wouldn't listen. He said he wouldn't tell Sheriff Trainer, but Tala, but he, he, man, he demanded, demanded that I got rid of the cube. I would have paid any price but that. It was my research. It was meant to make our lives better. I didn't want anyone to get hurt. I reassured him that I'd get rid of the cube, but I lied. I continued my research into Shanty Power, and eventually I was able to construct my prototype. It is a sad tale, and a responsibility that must be hard for you to bear, you reply falteringly. You are more than a little shocked and surprised by Leandra's sudden candidness. Leandra doesn't lose her focus. You can understand now why my father is adamant that I have nothing more to do with the Shanti relics. Looking directly into your eyes, she says, I know deep in my heart that the power they contain could bring about a better future for us all. I still feel sick knowing what happened to Lamar but I owe him results. I don't want his death to have been in vain. My father will never agree, but like you, I must be free to follow my own path. Leandra sets off through the forest and you follow closely in her wake. This area is not as heavily patrolled as the Western Passage. However, in spite of the apparent calm, you feel ill at ease. After a few minutes, your fears are realized when you hear the crunch of booted feet on snow echoing through the trees. The sound is getting louder as the unseen figures approach. You emerge into a small, snow-covered clearing and catch your first glimpse of the advancing enemy. Reaching for your weapon, you order Leandra to keep behind you and watch your back as you engage these fearsome foes, but she has other plans. Without saying a word, she turns and bolts for the trees that run along the edge of the chasm. Shocked by her sudden act of desertion, you watch her disappear into the brightly lit forest. You cannot chase after her, for the enemies are rushing in on all sides. Okay, don't have those. Okay, you spot a tree that's about to fall and you take advantage of it. Cut it down. Good. Your eye is caught by a dead and partially fallen pine close to where you are standing at the tree line. Only the lower branches of a neighboring tree prevented it from crashing to the ground. A group of enemy break away from the line and come rushing towards you, coolly. You raise your weapon and hack through the sporting branches, releasing the dead pine. There is a sudden and tremendous crack of dry timber as the tree topples forward. It crashes down into the clearing, sending a great cloud of snow billowing skywards. Several enemies are wounded by the falling pine, and many others are partially blinded by the snow. You seize this welcome advantage and attack them before they can fully recover. Ugh. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's starting to feel a bit rough. It's always the problem with uh, long recording sessions with games that require me to do a lot of talking.
Okay, I need to hit these guys while they're on level. Hit them with everything I've got. Yes, that does mean I'll be getting the magic sword out and just doing as much damage as I can beforehand. Explosive a bolt. Okay, you can buy that with the magic sword and it should be enough to take him out. Especially if I get the counter here. Good. He's dead as soon as I pull out the sword. Power it up and let it go. Seriously, he survived that. Well, he's not going to survive the burn damage. There we go. I would have been a three-man uh, kill with the sword. Oh hell! Crossbow. Poison on him. Old friend, need you. Got a loyal and trusted ally. Seriously, you're much more helpful than every human in this game. Every person in this game has been completely useless. Time. Okay, got some bleed on it, good. Ah, oh, for the love of it. This is the boss fight at the end of this chapter, isn't it? Oh, Jesus. Ooh. That is not good. Please don't make it still need Good. Maximum strength help potion. Oh, hell. My sword's now degraded to the point where it's not as much use. Son of a... badly wounded is that guy? Yep, that is doing a lot less damage now. And the phone is ringing. International out of area, so I don't care. I need to kill this thing fast. I mean, no, I don't have any poison hands left, it's already burning. Okay, turtle up and go defensive. Nope, I hung up without leaving a message. No, no, wolf friend, come back. I'm kind of screwed at the moment. Your help would be kind of appreciated. Okay, he's buffing his allies rather than attacking me directly. Almost gone. Damn, I really wish the sword wasn't broken. Pick the worst possible time to go as well. Got a boss fight with a giant critter. Ooh. Okay, that was pretty cool. Completely impractical, but pretty cool. I'm assuming they're buffed to do extra damage. Need to heal up. Okay, this one's quite badly injured. Quick strike, not quite enough. Rending claws. Good, he's down. This one's weapon. I don't want to use up my explosive bolts on him because I don't think he's worth it. Yeah, not if that's the best he can throw at me. Damn it, too early. 
Should have repaired my blades last time I was uh, at camp. That was foolish of me. I'm going to swap my primary and secondary blades around so that at least my primary will still be reasonably damaging. Okay, kill this one with a crossbow bolt. Yes, he does seem to be kissing his crossbow for uh, luck before he uses it, doesn't he? <laughs> that fight could have got a lot messier. Steel, finest leather, throwing knives in a cleaver. Let's take all of that lot. Beyond the chasm. How bad. Okay, I'm gonna swap that to there. And for the time being, until I can repair it, I'm gonna put a cleaver in my offhand. That, I'm assuming, will change up my attacks. Roll. Forward roll that connects with a tripping attack. Enemy to collapse, become incapacitated. Okay, so that's a bleed attack. And that's the defensive stance. Okay. So that's not too bad. <clears throat> After the last of your enemies fall, you find yourself once more swallowed by the darkness and the eerie silence of the sunken forest. With gritty determination, you resolve to press on into the forest to continue your mission, despite the perils that undoubtedly lie ahead. More than ever, you are determined to find the way to the enemy's fortress of Vitarg, and above all, deny them the chance of, to study and misuse Leandra's prototype. You can only hope that the girl's hasty departure will not help your enemy and their evil plans. Another intelligence boost for the door. Yep. I do like the fact that it's the decisions you make that uh, determine what gets increased. Though it does mean that I'd need to start making some aggressive decisions to boost my strength. Uh, one more and I get that ability, whatever it is. Now, is this going to be, what, Dark Forest Chapter 3? Yes, Forest. Sorry, Forest Hunt Chapter 3. This game is going to be long, I suspect, because I know there's four acts and we haven't even reached the end of Act 2 yet. Yeah, we don't get into the inventory because last time... Nope, didn't get repaired. Pity. Last time, uh, my stuff did. The night is still young and you must push on. Your muscles ache with combat fatigue, but you dare not stop to rest. The main enemy outpost is nearby and once you find it, perhaps you will also discover the weight of a tang. Whatever lies ahead in the northern area of the sunken forest, you vow to face and defeat it. Okay, so I can go back and repair my stuff. Which I probably ought to do. I could just use that axe to be fair, but no bollocks. Okay, if this is a vaguely long combat, this episode's going to overrun a bit, because we're pushing the 29 minute mark. Okay, it's not too bad. Quite badly damaged, and let's get some bleed on him. Hemorrhage attack. There we go. He's very dead. Or he will do once the bleed hits. Okay, I'm wounded. Heavy attack on him, and then I think I will kill him with a swanky sword of swanky. Because I can't remember what its actual name is, I'm just going to call it the Swanky Sword of Swanky. 
if anybody has any problems with that. Well, why are you watching this channel? Like, that's all I can say. Because like, if I can't remember the name of something, I'm just going to make up a silly one. Oh, he is very dead. Oh, bloody hell. If I'd known he was about to turn up, I wouldn't have used the swanky sword of swanky. Okay, that should weaken him a bit. Healing spell. It is shockingly useful, that healing spell. Get him, get him stunned. Wasting bolts. Go to a guard stance. Straight back. Yeah, this episode's going to overrun by a couple of minutes. My apologies for that. But... There we go. Okay, job done. Yeah, the axe works okay. I'll admit a weapon that's guaranteed to call, you know, the uh, bleed attack is kind of useful. But I'm still more of a sword guy. Take everything. Right, well, that to me seems like a pretty reasonable point to end this video. So I will say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.